normally for most North Koreans, it's a very difficult to leave the country by crossing the border because uh, there's military guards are watching, patrolling the border all the time, especially when the regime changes during Kim Jong-il, Kim Jong-un period. It changes a lot. These days, it's more difficult to leave the country. But at that time, since because I was living near the border, which means we had a very good relationship with the border guards. There were military guards, but like uh, to me, some of them was like an uncle, some of them like an older brother. That's why we kind of shared the friendship together between family, between them. So yeah, he led me, led me to cross the border. So actually, I, when I crossed the border, it was very easy than anyone because he was watching me to behind and then he even guided me to let me cross safely. You would think that escaping was the hard part. Yes. But it actually sounds like it was the time after that which was yeah. almost as challenging. Of course. I was thinking, you know, I saw a brilliant, bright new world through the border. So what I saw was the, the most beautiful world compared to my country. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know the, the behind the scene, behind the brilliant new world, what is waiting me, you know. I thought that's all for me, you know, maybe that's for everyone. But once I crossed the border into China, I realized I was an illegal migrant in the country. I had to hide my identity. Even, you know, it's breathing is difficult for me. So the brilliant new world is not for me. It's just not for no skin defector at all. So that's why from that time I had a really difficult life. I mean, I was hunted by the North Korean Chinese authorities all the time, simply because I was a North Korean defector. And eventually I was caught by the Chinese police even, but I was very lucky because I narrowly avoided being repatriated to North Korea by convincing them that I was a Chinese citizen. Because at the time, my Chinese language abilities were good enough to speaking naturally with them, including writing, including reading papers. So it's a really another um, an another miracle moment I made by learning all the Chinese so I could escape at the moment. I mean, in that situation, when I was caught by the Chinese police, there's not only one police was there. There's a to me, around 30 policemen was in the one room. I was interrogated by so many police policemen together. So in that situation, is a most defectors. I bet 100 defectors will be sent back to North Korea. Mm. So I was a very, very lucky one who can make it a void. And despite knowing the risks of being repatriated to North Korea, you still went back to get your mum and your brother out, and that yeah. in itself was dangerous, wasn't it? Yeah, because uh, mm, I mean, by later, 10 years later, I seek asylum to South Korea again since we've been divided for so long and still South Korea is my country, half the half percent, percent of my country. So I just uh, went there, but my life, I mean, I can't enjoy my life myself because, uh, because of me, my family in North Korea, they've been having problem every year. It's continuously, it will be never end what I found because uh, the government is just watching my family very severely and then they, to avoid the problem, they need to give a lot of bribes and money, everything. So I had to, I mean, I'm, uh, the reason I'm living in this world, not only for myself, now, family meant to me everything. I can do everything for my family. Mm -hmm. So in 2008, the end of 2009, when I arrived, after I arrived in South Korea, I made a big mind, big decision to take another risk in my life, in my life, and then, which I did. But again, I didn't know the way, the helping my family to make them, into guide them freedom, how it be difficult. I could never guess. I'm, I know that's not easy. Maybe I need to take another life with my life, but I thought I believed in my luck. Maybe, you know, I'm lucky girl, like what happened in the past in Chinese police station. Maybe miracle gonna happen in my life again. So I just believed in my luck and then I hoped 
there's no more hardships in my life again. And I went there, but I mean, there's no, not my side. I've been through so many difficult times throughout that. I'm just uh, every single steps I've been crossed at the time from border, near the border with China to through China and the Laos and Korea, South Korea, India. And it's such a, uh, that's why that's the most painful memory to me, you know, that I don't want to get through again in my life. Well, having been through all those painful memories and some of the things you describe in your childhood as well are just awful executions that you witnessed, for example. Um, why did you decide to write about it and to talk about it uh, to the whole world? Because that must be difficult. I think um, the world, they know about North Korea and then they know about the Kim regime, the dictators, and then they're always talking about nuclears or the missiles about North Korea. But many of them, they're not really, they forgot about the North Korean citizens, the ordinary people who are suffering under the regime. So by writing my book, I wanted to raise awareness so that I want to let people, I want to inspire people to get involved in some ways to help North Korean people, either North Korean defectors in China. Has yeah. that brought risks to you? I mean, are you getting uh, attention, um, perhaps even threats from the Kim regime? <laughs> uh, of course, I'm a girl, and uh, I'm not that brave. I'm not the fighter. I'm skilled about that. Actually, that's the biggest concern, actually. I mean, which my mom also worries the most of time with that. But because in the past, also, North Korean regime killed, assassinated some defectors in South mm -hmm. Korea. It did happen. And the South Korean government asked me twice in 2013 after I gave my TED talk if I need security bodyguards for me. But I mean, I wanted to enjoy my life, really. I mean, I don't know. If I believe you know, the regime really want to kill me, they do. I mean, no matter how many guards I have. So, but I, only, only I just hope it not happen to me, you know. I just, what I'm doing is for helping my North Korean people, I mean, my brothers, Because you say sisters, you love you know? North Korea still, yeah, you still yeah. feel North Korean. Do you believe yeah. it can never change? Of course, I believe. And then I In have optimism about, yeah. And that's why I'm fighting right now. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm sharing my story by doing it. I believe we can change faster than we thought. But also this is not easy and then it's hard to guess. But I believe it will happen in my lifetime. Yeah.